Welcome back everybody. Moving on to the next question. We have to determine two sets of values for y and z where the vectors a, which is negative 2, 3, and negative 1, vector b, 2, negative 4, and 5, and vector c, negative 7, y, and z span a plane in R3. Now span a plane in R3 also means that these vectors are coplanar. It's just another way this uh, question could have been worded, or it could have also said that these vectors lie on the same plane. So basically, visually what's happening is we have a plane here, and these vectors, so let's say this is like vector A, then this is vector B, and let's say this is vector C. All three of these vectors are lying on the same plane. And we got to find two sets of values for y and z that makes that so, where vector c is going to be on the same plane that a and b is on. Now, if you remember, if three vectors span a plane or they're coplanar, they lie on the same plane, then that means that we can take one of the vectors, let's say vector c in this example, and write it as the linear combination of the other two. So what that means is that we can take a constant m, multiply it by vector a, plus a constant n, multiply it by vector b, and that would give us vector c. And we could have written this out in any other order. So we could have said m times a plus n times c is equal to vector b. Any order works. I just decided to go in alphabetical order here. So if we bring in the actual components for these vectors, so vector a is negative 2, 3, negative 1. And then vector b is 2, negative 4, and 5. And then vector C is what? Negative 7, Y, Z. Notice that we can set up equations here. So negative 2 times M. Let's actually write them here. So negative 2M plus 2N has to equal negative 7. And we got 3M minus 4N has to equal Y. And then we got negative 1m, which is just negative m, plus 5n has to equal z. Now that we got these three equations here, we got to determine two sets of values for y and z where these three equations are going to hold. So the way you can do that is you can take this first equation that doesn't contain y and z. So let's rewrite it here. So we got negative 2m plus 2n is equal to negative 7. And what you can do is you can pick values for m and n where this is going to hold. And then you can take those values m and n, plug it in here, solve for y, plug it in here, solve for z. And then you could pick another set of values for m and n where this will hold. Again, plug it in here, plug it in here, and get that second set for y and z. So there's basically an infinite amount of answers for this. So the way that you find m and n values that make this equation hold is you just pick any value for m. So let's say 1. So I'd have negative 2 times 1 plus 2n equals negative 7. And now you just solve for n. So this would be negative 2, bring it over, we'll have 2n equals negative 7 plus 2, which is negative 5. So n would be negative 5 over 2, which is negative 2.5. Let's just keep it in decimals. So m equals 1, n equals negative 2.5. That is a set of solutions that would make that first equation equal. So negative 2 times 1 plus 2 times negative 2.5 would give us negative 7. So now what we can do, let's actually write these uh, values up here. So m equals 1, n equals negative 2.5. That is one set of solutions for this first equation. What we can do is we could take those now, 
plug it into these two equations and solve for y and z respectively. So starting off here, we got 3 times 1 minus 4 times negative 2.5 is equal to y. So if we do this, 3, uh, negative 4 times negative 2.5, that is um, positive 10. So 3 plus 10 gives us 13 for y. And then uh, solving for z, so plugging in uh, 1 for m plus 5 times negative 2.5 is going to equal z. So we'd have negative 1 plus 5 times negative 2.5, that's negative 12.5. So negative 1 minus 12.5, that's negative 13.5. And that is the value for z. And if you don't want to put it in decimals, you could just put negative 27 over 2. That is the same value. So that is one set of values for y and z that work. So if we plug in 13 for y, or for this coordinate, and negative 13.5 for the z component of vector c, that would make these three vectors coplanar. Basically, we would be able to create a linear combination of a and b to equal c. More specifically, when m would be 1, n would be negative 2.5. So that is one set. Now what about another set? Well, we can simply pick any other m value. So let's say uh, m is equal to, let's do negative 1, actually. So instead of positive 1, let's say this was negative 1. So this would end up being positive 2. Bring it over. Negative 7 minus 2 is negative 9. And then negative 9 divided by 2 would give us negative 4.5. So m equaling negative 1 and n equaling negative 4.5, that is another set for m and n that would hold for this first equation. So then what we could do is we could take those respective m and n values, plug it into here, into these two equations, solve for y and z respectively like we did over there. So starting off here, we got 3 times negative 1 minus 4 times negative 4. 4.5 equals y. So this would be negative 3. 4 times 4.5, that is um, 18. Positive 18. Negative, negative is positive. That is y. Negative 3 plus 18 would give us 15 for y. And then um, Plugging in these constants here, so we'd have negative times negative 1 plus 5 times negative 4.5, and that has to equal z. So we'd have positive 1, 5 times negative 4.5, that would give us negative 22.5. So 1 minus negative or 1 minus 22.5, that would give us negative 21.5 for z. So y equaling 15, z equaling negative 21.5, that is another set of values for y and z that would make these three vectors coplanar. And you can just keep doing this an infinite amount of times. You could just keep picking different values for m, solving for n, making sure that first equation holds, and then take those two m and n values, plug them in here, and then solve for y and z.